Hi friends, in this one I'm going to show you a couple examples of how to change indexes in sigma notation and summation notation. There is a logic and there is reason to this. It's not just some arbitrary stuff. I mean, so if you learn it, then you'll be able to do this pretty reliably. So take a look. I'm just going to go with a couple relatively simple examples. Imagine you have the summation here. And let's see, I'm going to go from n equals 1 to, for the sake of simplicity, just make this 3, only 3, simple. And then imagine this is n. So now when you write this out, what does this mean? It means n is at first 1. Then you got to go up to 3. The assumption is you go through the intermediate value, so you don't just put 1 plus 3. You got to put 1 plus 2 plus 3. When you work this out here, add these values up, you get a value of 6. So keep a careful eye on this, 6 right here, right? And then look at this expression in, in this form, it's going to be 1 plus 2 plus 3, right here. Look at the next example now. Imagine we want to just shift this index here, where n equals 1, we want to change that to 0 somehow. How do you make 1 into 0? Well, one, one thing that you can do is you can just subtract 1 from it. So take a look. Okay, let's see. I'll do it in this one. So I'm going to change it at first like this. It's going to say n is now equal to 1 minus 1. So I'm putting 1 minus 1 here to indicate that I'm moving this back by 1. If I'm going to do the bottom, I should very likely do the top. So in other words, I should do 3 minus 1. So in the bottom and in the top, I'm subtracting 1. And here, the temptation might be to replace n with n minus 1 also. But will this changed form give us the same result or not? Take a look at it. So, let's simplify. First of all, now this means n equals 0, because 1 minus 1 is 0, and 3 minus 1 is 2 up top. Simple subtraction. And this is n minus 1 right here. And now we write this, so you're going to have here, actually plug in values. So, when n is 0, what would you have? You would have 0 minus 1. Then, again, the assumption is it doesn't just go from 0 to 2. It goes from 0 to 2 through 1. So when n has the value 1, you would have the following. Plus 1 mi minus 1, and then you stop at the 2. So when n is 2, you're going to have plus, and then let's see, 2 minus 1. This should be equivalent to this, ultimately. But is this equivalent? Well, you got to work through it. So it's, it's negative 1 plus 0 plus 1. And now the issue is, look, right? This cancels with this. And in fact, the only thing left over here is 0. So what is the issue? Look, this is 0. This is 6. The two values are different. They are not the same. So by starting at 0 and going to 2, and by also assuming that since I'm subtracting 1 and subtracting 1 up here, that means that that automatically means I should also subtract 1 from the n here. That's incorrect, because it doesn't give you the same value as the original. So it is correct. Well, the way to do it then is not do it this way. So in other words, all of this stuff that I've written here, if you like, you can imagine it's like this, okay? What I mean is, it's no good. It doesn't work. As long as your goal is to have a v value of 6 for the sum, this doesn't work. So what does work? Take a look. Let me show you now. Next stage, so... Okay. You can, you can do n equals 1 minus 1. Again, subtracting 1 from the bottom. Up top you can do... Let's see, what was it? 3 minus 1 right here. And then in the expression you have to do the opposite of what you do to the value. So instead of doing n minus 1, do n plus 1. The opposite. And now when you work with this, let's simplify it, right? So this is the summation. This is now n equals 0, and this is going up to positive 2, and the expression is n plus 1. Now look, does this work? Check it. So when n has the value 0, now from this you would have 0 plus 1. When n has the value 1, from this you would have 1 plus 1. And when n has the value 2 here, so when n is 2, then from this you would have 2 plus 1. And notice these numbers within parentheses, they will come out to be 1 plus 2 plus 3. Take a look. So 1 plus 2 plus 3, which is equal to 6. In other words, what is it showing us? Look, this here, right, within a double border, 
that's the same as this quantity within the double border. You see this? This 6 within the circle right, is now the same as this 6 within the circle. And you get the same identical values output from the process. Okay, another example down below. You should still be able to see this here. Imagine you have, for example, the summation as n goes from 1. Okay, let me erase this a little bit. Imagine n is going to go from 1 over to some value like, again, for the sake of simplicity, make this 3 up here. So n is going from 1 to 3. An expression is something of the following form. Let me see. So like 1 over 2 to the n. When you write this out, it becomes, when n has the value 1, it becomes 1 over 2 to the first plus 1 over 2 to the second when n is 2 plus 1 over 2 cubed when n is 3. So now you're going to have 1 over 2 plus 1 over 4 and then plus 1 over 8. The specific value itself of these fractions, when you add them, that's not really important. What matters is that it's 1 half plus 1 quarter plus 1 eighth right here. You're adding up those fractions. So whenever you make a modification to this, the final result that you're going to add up, it should look just like this, regardless of how the sigma notation looks at first, as long as your goal is not to completely change the problem and break everything. So I'm going to apply the same logic as in the previous examples. This is what I mean. Take a look. Let me separate this, okay? So I'm going to say now it's sigma here. Okay, and I'm going to do on the bottom, I'm going to do 1 minus 1. So now this will be here 1 minus 1. I'm subtracting 1. In the top, I'm going to do the same thing. Instead of having 3, I'm going to have 3 minus 1 up there. And now, as in the example above, here you're not, you're not going to do n minus 1. You're going to do the opposite, n plus 1. And now you worked with this. Simplify this, right? So let's do that first. So this is n equals 0 on the bottom, and the top is 2. And now this here, let's see. So this expression becomes 1 over 2 to the n plus 1. And I worked with this. Plug in different values of n. Let's see. So when n is 0, you would have 1 over 2 to the 0 plus 1. Plus. When n is 1, you would have 1 over 2 to the 1 plus 1. And then lastly, when n is 3, I'm sorry, 2 rather, you would have up here 1 over... 2 to the 2 plus 1. Worked with this fraction. This is 2 to the 0 plus 1 is 2 to the first. In other words, it's just 1 half, correct? All right, look. This is 2 to the 1 plus 1. So it's 1 over 2 to the second, which is 4. So it's 1 quarter. And this is 2 plus 1, which is 3. So it's 2 to the third, which is 8. In other words, it's plus 1 eighth. So what is this telling us? Look. Look at this, okay, <laughs> and compare with this, right, and this double border right here, see this? One half, one half, one half, one fourth, one fourth, one eighth, one eighth, and all of the values are the same, except this sigma notation begins at zero, goes up to two, accordingly we change the expression, this time in the exponent. One last possible case to consider looks like the following here. All right, so let me just kind of block this off so we don't get confused with all this writing. So let me show you up here one last possible case that I made up. You can also do things like this. Imagine that you have the sigma here and what did I have? Oh boy, okay. N is equal to one and it's just like 0.1 raised to the N. And up there, I have a value of three. So it's 0.1 raised to the n. What you could do, following the same logic as in these examples down below, same logic would be this. You could rewrite this by shifting, so doing here not n equals 1, but n equals 2. So this would be like n equals 2. Okay, key step here, think about this. How do you go from 1 to 2? You add 1, right? So this is 3. How do you go from 3 to the next value up here? Well, since it's 1 plus 1 to get a 2, it's going to be 3 plus 1 to get a, a 4. All right, now, 
is going to be 0.1 and again because you're adding 1 you might be tempted to say that it's going to be here n plus 1 not correct it doesn't work instead here you do the opposite so because i went from 1 to 2 by adding 1 i went from 3 to 4 by adding 1 here you do the opposite and you do minus 1 and now when you write this out take a look so for example like when n has the value 2 what would you have so you'd have 0.1 raised to the 2 minus 1 correct plus let's see when n has the value 3 again the assumption is since it's going from 2 up to 4 it's got to go through the intermediate value of 3 it's not written anywhere in here but you got to assume that okay so plus 0.1 and this is raised to the 3 minus 1 and then plus 0.1 raised when n has the value 4 this is 4 minus 1 and then you work this out so it's 0.1 2 minus 1 is 1 plus 0.1 3 minus 1 is 2 plus 0.1 raised to the 4 minus 1 which is 3 but that's the same as if you just worked this one out think about it when n is 1 it's 0.1 to the first when n is 2 it's 0.1 to the second when n is 3 it's 0.1 to the third like this right? you would get the same expression in its final form the specific sum itself is not important in this context I'm just focusing on how to manipulate the indexes meaningfully and correctly and ultimately what it amounts to is ensuring that the values you end up adding like these here and these here okay like this being equal to 6 it's the same as this being equal to 6 and then whatever the sum is of these quantities it will be the same as if you wrote out this part right here the things you're adding in the end have to be the same that's the key you see so you can shift the index any way you want in fact by any number that you want you just have to make accordingly changes in the variables that you have as part of the expression that define what you're adding up that's all i want to say here please leave a like please subscribe i hope all of this is helpful leave some comments down below i'll see you in another video